what exactly is launch control? The idea behind launch control is how to take uh, leads that you have, opt-in or, or prospecting, and convert those leads into clients or into deals. And mm -hmm. so we have uh, features within the app that enable that. From the recipient standpoint, mm -hmm. they're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. They're, they're imagining you holding your phone, typing out that message. They don't see the magic behind the scenes. So what is this strategy that people need to implement to, to maximize their text messaging? We want to create shortcuts to that. Right. So we are truly in the engagement business, mm. not in the text sending business. That's, okay. That's step one. But All right. really what we're in the business of is engagement. Okay. And taking the challenge of we got it into the inbox. Now, what can you do to get it into the win column for yourself, right? For your company. What's up, Wealth Builder? So today on the podcast, we have one of the leaders of Launch Control, and he is going to teach us some marketing strategies. His name is Michael, and he is going to crush it. How you doing, baby? Doing really well. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Cool. So I wanted to have you on because, um, you know, running a flipping and wholesaling business and then running an education company that teaches flipping and wholesaling. I know that marketing and sales is usually the bottleneck for most people right? Because if you have enough leads, you're probably going to be successful, right? That's where it all starts. So I guess for people who don't know what launch control is, can we start with what exactly is launch control? Yeah, absolutely. So launch control is an SMS engagement software. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our clientele is in the real estate investment side, but we do have other industries that we work with. So mm -hmm. the idea behind launch control is how to take uh, leads that you have, opt-in or or prospecting, and convert those leads into clients or into deals. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, features within the app that enable that. Automations, um, mm -hmm. reply features that able, allow you to scale, but scale in a sense that from the recipient standpoint, mm -hmm. they're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. They're, they're imagining you holding your phone, typing out that message. They don't see the magic behind the scenes. Got it. Okay. So... So it's, you know, you could do mass SMS, um, which I know c can get very cheap leads, right? Mm -hmm. Compared to PPC, mail, cold calling. I think texting is maybe the most scalable and you, you'll get the most amount of leads. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. But there's it's also really about the strategy mm -hmm. that you put behind it. Yeah. Right? So... Uh, when you're when you're putting leads into into launch control, yeah, or, or any platform that you use, right? The mm -hmm. the idea is to get the captive attention of homeowners yes. who might be motivated mm -hmm. and looking to sell. Yeah. So any text response that you get is a potential deal that you can close. So yes. the strategies that go behind that, the the inbox strategies, even if even if your strategy is to push that to a call to get on site with a homeowner to take that captive attention and convert that lead, build trust with the homeowner, that's what it's all about, mm -hmm. right? So it's, I think that SMS sometimes gets misconstrued as a volume game, mm. that if you just pump enough leads into the system, you'll get enough deals out of it. Yeah. But the real money, the people that make, that, that really get the highest ROI, mm -hmm. take the challenge of converting everything that's in the inbox. Yeah. Like we just got a text message today, just this morning from somebody that closed Two hundred and ten thousand dollars in their first month, Damn. and has another hundred k lined up for next month. Wow! They didn't do that by just blasting messages Text out. Messages. They did okay. it because they had a process, and the process right. is working. Well, we're going to teach the process today. So, how does somebody? <laughs> so, what is this strategy that people need to implement to to maximize their text messaging? All right. Well, if, step number one. Okay. Right, there's a lot that we can do here. And, uh -huh. and what you and I can get into, because I have a bunch of questions for you Okay. about where leads get generated yeah. and, and how, to, how to really take motivated leads mm -hmm. and put those into the system and see what comes out. Mm, but okay. if we're talking about the way that people currently view SMS engagement, I want to change that. Okay. Is they're, you know, they're putting uh, what gets referred to as data into yeah. the system. A hundred percent. Yeah. All right. So, but oftentimes people will say, oh, but I put, you know, a thousand leads in. Yeah. No, you didn't. No, it's not leads. You put, yeah. you put some Raw names data. of yeah. like, fits and filters. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's not a lead until, until mm -hmm. you have some kind of engagement with that homeowner. Mm -hmm. That's where we want to, we want to create shortcuts to that. 
right? So we are truly in the engagement business, mm. not in the text sending business. That's, okay. That's step one. But All right. really what we're in the business of is engagement. Okay. And taking the challenge of we got it into the inbox. Now, what can you do to get it into the win column for yourself, right? For your company. And the, the step number one is that it's not, da- it's not data, it's not leads, it's a homeowner. It's a human being okay. on the other end. That was deep. Right? <laughs> no, but I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, I get I, it. Yeah. Because a lot mm-hmm. of times what happens is that all of the influence and all of the charm mm-hmm. gets left for the discovery call. Yeah. But, but there are three or four touch points before that, mm. five touch points yeah. before that, yeah. where you had the, you had the, the chance to take this, this, lo- this little known opportunity of wholesaling mm-hmm. for most homeowners create trust, create an opportunity, get mm. the person to the point that when you do get on that discovery call, they're more likely to give you their motivation, to give yeah. you the details that you need about the house, mm-hmm. to let you advance it to the point so that you're not taking your first three steps in that conversation to essentially, in a really charming way, say, trust me, trust me, trust me. Mm-hmm. But instead being able to dive into the meat of the thing, which is solutions for, for homeowners, mm-hmm. right? Because if you can get that, then it's a win for both of you. You get a great deal. They get an exit strategy that they didn't know existed. Yeah. Right? So that that phase of things, that's where we really want to help you shine. Mm-hmm. But that's collaborative, mm-hmm. right? That's not just the text messaging system. Mm-hmm. That's the REI strategy that goes behind it. Yeah. So that's why I'm in this seat because okay. we have to partner with with people like you yeah. that really understand real estate investment and are, mm-hmm. and are working directly with the people that are using yeah. launch control. Mm-hmm. So you guys can say, remember, it's a human being on the other side. Yeah. So let's put them through a series of touch points. Here's the strategy. Here's the thought process that goes behind it. Mm-hmm. And if we can if we can combine that with the strategies that we know work mm-hmm. from working with thousands of investors in every market in the country, mm-hmm. the success ratios off the charts. Mm. So I remember I had that mindset shift whenever I, w- I used to cold call. Yeah. Cause there, there are times when you're cold calling or I'm sure text messaging where you're just, you're just blasting out. You, you just, you're like, Hey, do you want to sell your house? No. Okay, cool. Hey, do you want to sell your house? Okay, no, yeah. cool. But what you're talking about is being more intentional with your conversations or your text messages, um, to convert better. Yeah. And convert abs- more. Absolutely. The cold calling example is perfect. Yeah. Because, Everybody who's done any cold calling has gotten caught with their pants down, essentially, mm-hmm. where you were just dialing, dialing, dialing. Nobody was picking up. Somebody picked up. And you're like, oh, 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 so, so would you would you be interested? And in, yeah, and you just lost your flow. Yeah, right? like mm-hmm. first three calls, you had it teed up in your head, and yeah. it was going to be perfect, right? Mm-hmm. Like you were going to be on point with your with your pitch. Yeah, you had thirty seconds, sixty seconds to to really capture enough of their attention to get them to stay on the call. Mm-hmm. Right, so that same problem happens in SMS engagement. Yeah, people just send out, hey, this is Rob, do you wanna sell your house over on blank? That's right. it. Right, That's, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Like when I started about four years ago or so, mm-hmm. and the way that I got started was, um, cause I didn't come in from a wholesaling background. Mm. So the CEO of the company said, you need to learn wholesaling. And I said, okay, so like, YouTube, like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And he goes, no, 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 you have to, you're not gonna learn it unless you learn it from investors. Mm. So he had me call everybody, basically, all of our <laughs> users. And and I, I went into it, you know, I, I helped them with content, I helped them write messages, but I went into it with the purpose of learning the business. Mm. And, and I talked to people that were, you know, just getting started. I talked to people that had a team of eight or nine or 10 and were doing, you know, mm-hmm four or five million a year, yeah. if not more, mm-hmm. right? And and almost everybody for SMS engagement was sending out some version of a text that said, you're the owner of 57 Green Street, is that correct? Mm-hmm. You know, and they were like, yeah. oh yeah, this is gold. It's like, no, it's not. Yeah. Like, everyone is sending that exact same message. There's no personality behind it. Mm-hmm. There's There's nothing to differentiate you and the other seven people sending that message over whatever span of time, Mm -hmm. right? But when you get, for everybody, when they get to their discovery call phase, they're like, no, I've got a whole system, it's different. 
Yeah. I, I take them down this talk track. If they say this, I take them down this talk track. If they say that, and they've got this, what they feel like is a real bullet point, bulletproof strategy, mm -hmm. but they don't, they don't use that yeah. in the early stages. And, that, mm -hmm. and again, like that's one of the things that we really want to change is to get people thinking about, I'm speaking to a homeowner, right? Because mm -hmm. if you think about this visual, right? This is, this is one of the hard things to figure out when you're doing SMS engagement. You're looking at a dashboard, you're looking mm -hmm. at a screen, you're managing 25 conversations at one time, Yeah. right? But the truth is every single one of those people that answered a text mm -hmm. are still looking at their phone. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you imagine that person at whatever they're doing in their life, right? Mm -hmm. Like walking on, walking from the store to their car, sitting on their couch in their office at work. Yeah. And they're captively looking at their screen. Mm -hmm. They sent you a message. What do you want? Wait, if like, if I said to you, like, Hey, you want to grab coffee later? And you were like, sure. What time you're expecting a response. Yeah. You're expecting me to say mm -hmm. how about 5 p.m. or how about 4 p.m., right? Yeah. Like you're not putting your phone away and, and getting around to it a couple of hours later. Yeah. SMS is in the moment. Mm. And so I think people sometimes forget that every single one of those people that responded in any way positive, are still holding their phone. You have their captive attention. Are you gonna say something basic or are you gonna use the strategies that you know work later down the chain Mm -hmm. to really get that person to commit. So do, would you say it's better that when you send out a text message and they respond with something positive or something that they're somewhat interested to call them immediately or to try to keep the conversation on text? I think that it, it depends. This is where I think that, all right, so let me, let me put it this way. If somebody raises their hand, right? They, they get into the inbox, they mm -hmm. respond. At that point, it has to be coupled with either if you're a solo entrepreneur, your strategy of how to convert these leads, or if you're working for with, with your team, what you guys would suggest as, as a strategy. Now, there are certain leads that I would definitely just pick up the phone and call mm -hmm. right away, right? Yeah. Because the, the ultimate goal in any wholesaling deal is to get to that, that level of conversation with the homeowner where you're finding out their motivation, you're, you're going through alternatives, you're finding out the details about the house that you need mm -hmm. to know if this deal even makes sense for you. Mm -hmm. But everybody has different ways that they go about it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people will say, well, we want to find out if you qualify for this for this process. Mm -hmm. Others will will try to take a really friendly, I'm just a local landlord kind of approach, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the what you need to decide, I think, as any, again, as a solo investor or as a team, is you need to figure out what the handoff strategy is in that system, right? Mm -hmm. Because if if there is something that you want them to call right away, the, the homeowner asked for a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it's not negotiable. They just, they threw a number out and it was a little high. You're probably gonna wanna call that person. So if you wanna do that, you want your team, you don't want your team to do it 24 hours later or 48 hours later, because mm -hmm. a VA created a report for you guys and now you're calling them. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, again, the person's looking at their phone. So mm -hmm. how do you activate that captive attention? You're going to have your processes, but, but sticking to those processes and sticking to those routines so that it's, there's no guesswork, mm -hmm. right? Because there's only a certain number or certain types of responses that come in and you mm -hmm. can map all of those responses. Mm -hmm. So if you map those responses to strategy and you know that no matter who's behind the wheel, no matter who's sending the text messages out, that the system's going to be followed. And if type A, lead type A comes in, that's gonna get pushed to a call and someone on your team is gonna do it, mm -hmm. right? If it's lead type B, it's it's a little less of a hot lead and you wanna follow up with uh, a tech strategy, then you've got that strategy in place. So there's no guesswork. Mm -hmm. Because what happens now is people send as many messages as they can mm -hmm. and they wait for desperation to shake through, mm -hmm. right? But if, if you're, only aiming for desperation. Like how many leads of those people that raised their hand, that did respond, that were looking at their phone, mm -hmm. how many are actually closable with strategy and processes? Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah. Right? So like what KPIs should people be aiming for when they're sending out text messages? Um, you, you, wanna, you wanna look at 
not just deliverability and, and response, which is what a lot of people tend to focus on, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, the KPIs really start with response and then everything that comes after that, right? So so if you if you look at, let's say that you send out- A thousand. A thousand messages mm -hmm. and you get 200 total responses. Okay. What was the value of those responses? Because that will tell you if you need to tweak your messaging or not, right? If, if 180 of those messages were te basically telling you to kick rocks, then your mm -hmm. messaging needs tweaking, mm. right? If, I don't know, 80 of those ended up as warm or hot leads, and, and you feel like of those 80, maybe 15 are, are enough to get to the point that you're at least having a lengthy discovery call, if not an on-site visit, mm -hmm. then the ROI on that is bonkers. Yeah. Right? Because then it, because at that point, like if you've gotten them to truly engage, right? Like you've gotten to the point that you've gotten discovery calls. The number mm -hmm. of discovery calls is a great KPI. Okay. Because the number, once you get to the number of discovery calls, has nothing to do with launch control. It has nothing to do with the marketing source that it came in from. You're not sales. It is, it's, it's all sales, mm -hmm. right? And it's how well your team converts or how well you convert. Mm -hmm. So you can, whether you're a solo entrepreneur, that becomes your self-improvement metric. Or if yeah. it's a team, it becomes your team improvement metric. Uh -huh. But if you're able to get to that point, right? And, and it does have to be paired with what I said, right? If you've got the strategy mapped out for response structure and uh -huh. what, what you're gonna do with each one of those responses, and that generates the next step, which is number of discovery calls that you mm -hmm. got over the month. If you can improve that month on month, mm -hmm. then your strategy is improving. And if you can up the number of discovery calls, then it, there's no guesswork left in terms of how much money you'll make mm -hmm. because you're gonna have a close ratio, right? Like your team is gonna close X percentage mm -hmm. of discovery calls that they get. Mm -hmm. So you can do pretty quickly, you can figure out what your, not only what your ROI is, but what your potential ROI could be as you continue to improve those processes. Mm -hmm. So how many discovery calls should people be aiming for on a thousand text messages? Um, I don't want to, I don't want to give a specific number and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. It's right? hard to, yeah. Right. Cause this is, this is the, this is the stat that I, I despise the most in okay. SMS engagement <laughs> is when, when somebody goes, well, how many text messages to a deal? Yeah. I'm like, well, how good at you? How good are you yeah, at, your, yeah, at what you no do? To, yeah. Like that's, that's not a, that's not a metric, right? It's yeah. not a simple math equation where you send out a thousand messages, you're going to get one deal. There are, there are people that send out, you know, there's one person I'm thinking of in particular in the Phoenix market that he's on our core account and he's doing enterprise level numbers of deals because mm -hmm. he's just really good at it. Yeah. You know, and he's got a great he's talented. Team talented and so he closes a bunch and he spends less with us every month because he doesn't need to spend more with us because mm -hmm. he doesn't need to do the volume mm. he puts all of his focus on those personal relationships with the recipient mm -hmm. and just absolutely crushes it mm -hmm. right so it's i think of it as a way of challenging yourself or mm -hmm. challenging your team mm -hmm. right so if you if you sent out i don't know a thousand messages month one Mm -hmm. And you got three discovery calls mm -hmm. instead of going, well, this marketing channel doesn't work. No, wait, can I do better with this? Right? Like, is there a way to do better? Mm -hmm. Because there is, right? Yeah. Like if you were just winging it, you've never done it before, then, you know, there's strategy that you can employ. Now, my, my team is great about this. They will, they will teach SMS engagement strategy, but SMS engagement strategy has to be coupled with real estate investment strategy. Mm. Right. So that's where good coaching comes in. Yeah. That's where good networking comes in. Mm -hmm. And being able to kind of take these concepts of real estate investment, coupling them with the SMS engagement strategy mm -hmm. and start making some improvements, have an improvement plan for the next month. And if the next month you get 15 discovery calls, then, you know, not only are you going to get high ROI out of that, you'll get the you'll get the buzz from having closed more deals. Mm -hmm. You also get the KPI buzz of being like, I went from three discovery calls to 15. I wonder if I could bump that up to 25 next month. Yeah. You know, and it's not necessarily about sending more, more volume. Mm -hmm. It's just about improving on the processes that you've already got in place. So you're not spending more money on data and you're not spending more money on skip tracing. Instead, you're maximizing the data that you've already got by having better processes and better engagement strategies. Got it. 
So what KPIs do you look at if someone comes to you and says, hey, we're doing text messaging, but we aren't having any success? What do you look at? Uh, start at the beginning, look at data. Okay. Where, are you, where are you getting your data from? Okay, right? number one. I've, I've, I've literally had people, so I'm not making this up. This is an exact quote. Yeah, I've, I've got this Lexus Nexus list that I've been using for about six, seven years now. I'm still getting deals out of it. Okay. I was like, don't do that. Like, they, they, mm -hmm. there are other ways that you can use that that list. But if you're if you're using a really really old list that is mostly going to be outdated, yeah, information, like your your odds of success are going to be really low, right? Okay. So the, the quality of the data matters, and and where people really miss an opportunity is to use SMS engagement for retargeting motivated leads. Mm. Right? Of really upping their game, and this is something I'd love to I'd love to get your feedback on. Mm -hmm. we, if you want to transition to this at some point, yeah, is is how to use really good marketing to to build lead generation, and then take that lead generation and work it through an SMS engagement system. Mm. Because the that when you can get those more motivated leads, people that have already raised their hand and expressed interest, mm -hmm. then your response rate and and SMS more than doubles, your conversion rate more than doubles. Mm -hmm. It's it's the easiest way to achieve success through, mm. through that method. Yeah. Right. So having having a nice mix of both is 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 really important. But the first thing we'll look at is data and say, you know, how much of your data is outbound, how much of it is inbound, mm -hmm. motivated leads. How well are you targeting your data? Right? Yeah. Because the more granular you can get, the more effective you will be. Mm -hmm. If you send out one, you know, that that bad text message that I gave you an example yeah. of, like you own 57 Green Street, right? And you send that to everybody in Vegas, you're not going to do well. Yeah. There's there's nothing unique about that. There's nothing that says I can provide solutions for you. I'm different than mm -hmm. everyone else that's been sending you text messages. Now, if you can drill down your list to a single housing community, and your opportunities within that housing community, and you can mention that housing community in the text, then it feels small and personal and knowledgeable, mm. right? So looking for ways to really, really Personalize. shrink down your, your, your data to measurable um, sets mm. is important because it, it essentially comes, comes in, this is where like marketing starts to come in, right? Mm. Marketing, you A-B test everything. Yeah. Right? You know, just send a subject line on an email and go, that's the one. You try two or three and you see what hits, right? Yeah. You And, and A-B testing like across the board for marketing, mm -hmm. right? So why wouldn't you be doing that with SMS engagement? Why wouldn't you take, say, for instance, a small list of high equity owners and then try one approach and that's really kind of just friendly and light, mm -hmm. right? And then take from that same list of high equity owners Take another approach that's very kind of straightforward, professional, answers all of the questions. Yeah. See what performs better. Mm. So you have a path forward. Yeah. Right? There, there's no magic text. There's no one way of expressing things that's going to get you a 40% response rate. Mm. The only way you're getting a 40% response rate is if it's opt-in and you, you've got motivated leads coming in. Mm. Then, then you definitely will get that. Yeah. Right? If it's cold outbound, you have to A-B test. And you have to see what works because mm -hmm. it changes market to market. And it definitely, going back to what I said in the beginning about focusing on the homeowner mm -hmm. as a recipient, who are you talking to? Yeah. Changes right. per list. Totally. So first you start with data. Yeah. Okay. Where do people get good data? Uh, well, this is, this is a question of, <laughs> this is where it gets difficult because it depends on what you can afford, right? Okay. If you're using something like, uh, 8020 REI. They have great data. 8020 REI. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it's it's usually that that's data usually for the more successful investors. Like you you work your way. How up much is that? To that. Uh, it depends. Their packages. So I'll let I'll, if anybody's looking them up, I'll let you all decide. Right? Yeah. Figure that out. What would you guess? Um, it's it's in like it's in the thousands per month to 
to get. Oh, just have the system. It. Right, right, right. But they don't do like skip tracing, like 11 cents per skip. No, or it's not that. It's curated. So, Got it. So what you're getting is the elusive data that not everyone else has. Mm, right. Because okay. Yeah, it's, it's worth it. It's very much. And it's only a thousand bucks? No, 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 no. It's more than that. But oh. there, there, are, there are tiers for it. So yeah. I'll, let, I'll let them go over the tiers. Okay. But it's curated. It's not the data that everyone else has, which is, which is you know, the the magic trick for everybody, right? Like if you yeah, can. Yeah, the data. You, right. But uh, on, the, on the lower tier of things, or not lower tier, but the beginner's side mm -hmm. of things, where cost efficiency is everything. Yeah. Right? Um, there are a few different data sources that you can use that that don't cost much, but it's it's how you use them that is the most important. So, like I said, like when you're talking about your A B testing your campaigns, like how well did you filter that data? How narrow did you did you focus down your your attention before reaching out to them so that you aren't just burning through it, right? Mm. And and then having those systems in place based on res response structure, what is your next action that you're going to take? Understanding that everybody that raises their hand, everybody that hits the inbox mm -hmm. that isn't a clear do not call mm -hmm. is you need to take them through a series of touch points. Right? Yeah. Is it text, text, call? Is it call immediately? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, what, what is your, your process yeah. for, for converting that lead that that's matters more almost than where the the data actually came from. Now, the data that that really matters is if you can generate your own data, right? Which is getting those inbound leads. And mm -hmm. and I think that there are a lot of opportunities for people to generate more inbound leads than they are currently. So mm -hmm. like what would you suggest for somebody who's new mm -hmm. to the game, doesn't have a lot of money, yeah, but wants to start in these kind of inbound lead processes mm -hmm. that will, you know, in the future might be thousands and thousands of leads coming in. But like, what, what are the first steps you would tell people to take if they wanted to have inbound lead structure? Inbound lead. So that means leads are coming to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Land, so landing on your website, opting in for SMS, getting yeah. more information, coming to your social media. Like what's, what, what would you suggest for? Well, there's a lead? bunch of different ways. So I can go off market or on market. So the let's, cheapest. Let's go off market because that's where okay. most launch users are, are, are largely off market. So let's go there. If you are, if I was going the absolute cheapest way possible for someone that's just starting, what I would probably do is if you could get access to the MLS or get access, to, you, you could do it on Zillow or Redfin and start putting in realtors information into launch control and then sending them a text message, letting them know that you're looking for off market opportunities and you're a cash buyer and you want to buy 10 homes a month or something like that. You know, let's jump on a call if you ever if you like to work with investors or something like that that would be like the smallest list that i think would generate the most amount of discovery calls mm -hmm. because realtors are already in the business of like in real estate right and uh, yeah would that be considered yeah. inbound yeah absolutely so let me let me ask you a question tell me if you think that this if this makes sense yeah All right so what I what I would do with that mm -hmm. is I would uh, I would direct the the realtors to you know collect that information, but also have them direct people to my website. Mm -hmm. And the reason I would do that is twofold. One, uh, it's about establishing trust, right? Like mm -hmm. you're sure you're probably going to trust the real estate agent, but you want you're going to want to vet this person on your own. You're going to want to make sure that they're they're legitimate. The and realtor? If, no the the person that the realtor is referring so you oh, okay so they me, would right? yeah so you would send them to a vsl all right that would make more sense because the, the problem this is a problem with most investors is they don't understand marketing that's that's a big issue right. they're not marketers i barely now after years of being in marketing understand marketing if that yeah. makes sense so the the hard part is like let's just say you're coming in and you want to be an investor, right? I got to teach you first of all, like how to run your numbers, the contracts, 
some people don't even understand what escrow is or what lenders are, or they don't even understand the concept of real estate. Yeah. So they got to learn the concept of real estate. Then they got to learn the concept of investing and then they got to learn marketing and then they got to learn sales. So there's so many aspects that people have to learn at once that it's tough. So what I would do if, if this is, if we're just talking about marketing, I would hit that list if we're going the smallest list possible. And then I would send them to a VSL, not a website because a website, most websites just have a whole bunch of different tabs and who is Brian Davila? Who is this? Who is that? Mm. Where a VSL sales funnel page is you click on it or you go to it and there's one video. It's a 10 minute video and it explains exactly whatever you're trying to get across. So for example, for wealthy investor, we run a Facebook ad, they click on the Facebook ad. It goes to a VSL where we elaborate on the ad that they just saw with a call to action at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So if they wanted to, they would make a VSL page on like ClickFunnels and say, hey, my name is Brian. I'm a real estate investor. I, I live here in Las Vegas. I love to work with realtors, blah, 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 blah. If you want to work with me or if, if you want to jump on, on a call with me and my team, you know, fill out the, the, the link below and we will give you a call in the next five minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. That would be the hottest leads because you sent, you sent out a text message. They went and consumed that content and then they chose to opt in for a call. But I don't know if that's too much. No, what do you I, think? I love it. I look, I hear the two biggest gaps from yeah. my perspective in the industry. Yeah. You just hit on one which is nobody understands marketing. No. Right? And and you don't have to be like the CMO of a big company. Mm -hmm. there, there are basic marketing principles that you can put into place that will create those motivated leads that you want, right? The people that are actually coming to you, not you going to them. Yeah. Right? Which are always, there's always more ROI in that. Mm -hmm. right? The other gap is that and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you yeah. know, you know the, the social media space yeah. much better than I do. Uh -huh. But what I find is that there are literally thousands of videos that will get you really excited about how to get into wholesale yeah. real estate. That'll build you up on the opportunities and the op of the, how much money that you can make doing wholesaling, mm -hmm. which is true. You know what I don't see a lot of? What? Wholesaling as a solution. If you mm -hmm. are a homeowner, yeah. Looking for alternatives. You mm. can't afford to put the money into your house to sell it on MLS. You you don't know what to do. You feel like you've got, you know, liens on the place and mm. yeah. you feel like you're out of options and you're looking for options. I don't see a lot of content yeah. that 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 shows people mm -hmm. what their options are. Mm -hmm. And so when people reach out via via SMS or mm -hmm. direct mail or even the PPC ads, there's this level of distrust. Because yeah, because they're like, I don't know this person. I don't, I don't know this person. I don't know this system. I don't know what is wholesaling. Is it legitimate? Yeah. They don't know. There is, there's no personal connection, right? There's no yeah. personal story. And every closed deal is this, because with that same mindset, right? Like every closed deal, if you go, somebody says, oh, I closed 100 deals last year. Mm -hmm. Every real estate investor thinks, do the math 15 20k at least per deal wow that's a lot of money yeah right i see it as that is 100 stories of homeowners they helped out yeah stories sell mm -hmm. stories build trust mm -hmm. right so investors everywhere even the even the beginning one beginner investors who've only closed a deal or two they're sitting on these stories that build trust mm -hmm. so if you can take these stories and, and combine them with what you just said, right? Mm -hmm. Here's this video explaining what they do, giving a case study essentially of yeah. somebody that they just helped mm -hmm. and then adding SMS um, opt-in mm -hmm. in the bottom of that form or somewhere in that form mm -hmm. so that you now have that data. It, you're not just restricted to calling them on the phone. Yeah. Like they've opted in to receive text messages from you. Mm -hmm. Now you can put them on automations, you mm -hmm. can, you can have this this um, relationship building process mm -hmm. be something that is at least somewhat automated yeah. and, and allows you to do more volume, but to do more volume on a human to human level, 
Mm -hmm. instead of this cold outreach kind of level, right? Mm -hmm. So taking those those marketing principles, like the one that you just said, that will pay huge dividends. Mm -hmm. that, that will be far, far, far more efficient for them to get deals out of launch control than spending X amount of money on, I'm not going to name the data sources that everybody knows that are cost less money, and then skip tracing, right? And yeah. just rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat. But instead taking the time to focus on that, okay, if I really want to stand out, mm -hmm. right, is it, is it having a good te initial text message enough? Mm -hmm. It helps. But yeah. if, if you can be capturing leads through other places that are mm -hmm. getting to that kind of video strategy that, that uh, I help homeowners case study kind yeah. of strategy, and you're making sure that you're not just ending at a phone call, Mm -hmm. but actually getting the SMS opt-in, yeah. then that allows you, because you're not, all, you're not gonna close every, every lead. What's up, Wealth Builders? In case you didn't know, Ryan Pineda and I have partnered and we are teaching people how to start investing in real estate or how to scale your business. Since starting Wealthy Investor, we have had over a thousand students go through the program and we have helped people get their first deal and we've helped people make over a million dollars in their career. If you're interested in learning how to flip houses, wholesale, buy rentals, Airbnb, or just build wealth through real estate investing, then you need to join Wealthy Investor. So what you need to do is go in the description and click on the link below and book a call with someone on our team. Yeah, right. And what's like, what do you think is probably the biggest determining factor for whether someone is going to sell their house in the moment in a 30 to 60 day window what's the biggest determining factor yeah uh it, price if they're well first is motivation like do they want to sell in the next 30 days mm -hmm. and then one of them it's it's hard to say the biggest but you're saying if somebody is already set to sell it on the next 30 days. Well, I'm saying like you you got to the point that you had a discovery call. Yeah. Right? I had a discovery call with someone. Right. So you're not going to, let's say you have 10 discovery calls this week. Yes. You're not going to get 10 deals. Yeah. Or may, maybe you Hopefully. will. Hopefully. Yeah. No, mo I would mo no. Most people aren't. Yeah. Right? So those that didn't close, mm -hmm. is it is it more a case of the, the price and they mm -hmm. just weren't okay with it? Mm-hmm. Or is it more a case of timing? Like I think need, time. That's for sure time. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Because yeah. I think what happens is for most people, again, like wholesaling isn't a known thing to homeowners most of the time. Yeah. Right. Unless they unless they own multiple properties and and you're you're dealing with essentially another investor, mm -hmm. it's they have to be able to digest the idea of wholesaling. Most people don't tell the homeowner they're home selling. They're wholesaling. That's very rare. No, of course not. But, yeah. but when I say wholesaling, I just mean a direct sale. Oh, okay. Like selling off market. Right. Yeah. Right. Direct so they don't even selling. know that they can do that. Yeah. And, and there's this, this trust factor that mm -hmm. needs to be gotten over and established. Yes. Right. So the idea of it's, I think a lot of homes are sold in the second wave mm -hmm. where they say, yeah, you know, I really appreciate the information. I didn't know this, that this was a route I could take, but I'm just, I'm not ready to go down that path yet. Mm-hmm then they digest it then they think about it and when and two months later or three months later they're ready to sell mm -hmm. but if you don't have any processes in place to maintain that relationship yeah you're not going to get the deal no right the the person who was in front of them with the right offer at the time that they mentally decided mm -hmm. it was time to go that route you did all the work yeah you convinced them like mm -hmm. they had they didn't know direct uh, direct sale was a possibility they didn't know the, the the alternatives. You took them down alternatives. You got their motivation. You won them over. That you showed them that this was a possible route to go. The deal was all but yours, and you didn't keep up communication along the way. And as a result, the next person that came along that said, "Yeah, I can give you a deal like that," I said, "Sure, I'll take it." Yeah. Right? And, and so that it's person was like, "Man, I just got the easiest deal this week." Yeah. And it's because you did the work. Yeah. I think if you were to put it as an analogy, how most wholesalers work is they'll walk up to, let's say they're a man, they walk up to a woman, they'll say, hey, do you want to go on a date right now? <laughs> yeah. And then if the person says no, they're like, ah, oh, they're not a good lead. 
And then sometimes they will randomly talk to the right person that is ready to go on a date at that very moment. Then they'll be like, oh, this is how the strategy works, where the previous 10, if they would have had the right mindset where, hey, like, you know, are you interested in, you know, possibly going on a date at some time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's keep in contact. You know, what kind of date do you want to go on? And then you know, work their leads like that, they would have a lot more success where they get lazy because they send out text messages. Hey, you own the property on Garwood. Are you interested in selling? A homeowner might see that and think, well, I don't want to sell right now. So no, but they are planning on selling later on. Yeah. But you just completely missed that person because you didn't leave it. Your copy was too straightforward or you didn't ask an, uh, an open enough question. That makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. And I'll, I'll take the analogy one step further, which yeah. is somebody will get lucky on that the first attempt. Right? Yeah. The first first person they wanted to ask out. Yeah. And they'll say something just, you know, the most basic thing, like, hey, do you come here often? Yeah. Right. And and it works. Mm -hmm. And then they tell everybody that they know, oh, I got the magic ticket. Yep. All you say is, do you come here often? It closes deals. Yep. You get dates. Every, every <laughs> single situation is different. Yep. Every homeowner has a different motivation. Yep. Every homeowner has a slightly different timeline. Every homeowner has a different level of trust or mistrust mm -hmm. that needs to be overcome. Yeah. There, there is no one phrase yeah. that's going to get it done, especially if we're talking about SMS and this is your first point of contact. Mm -hmm. There is no one phrase that is going to deliver every single time. Yeah. The question is how well can you adjust? A, mm -hmm. B test, mm -hmm. figure out what works, what doesn't. And again, like segment down so that you know exactly who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. You don't talk to a geographic region, you talk to a human being. Yeah. Right? So how close can you get to narrowing that down? It's it goes back to marketing again, right? Like marketing often comes down to demographics. Mm -hmm. The best way for you to figure out whether someone's gonna buy something or not is mm -hmm. to know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. Like, are you talking to men 18 to 26 who are into sports, follow professional sports teams, mm -hmm. and are, you know, really like fantasy football? That's one voice that you're gonna use, right? Mm -hmm. Are you talking to, I don't know, women over the age of 50 retired into gardening and travel mm -hmm. it's a different voice different approach right so marketing employs that all the time but in in real estate investment it often gets uh temp it, it gets put into templates mm -hmm. and those templates are often far too broad right? what about so let's say you're talking to a brand new flipper or wholesaler uh -huh. and they're like all right i want to start text messaging what list or what demographic do you normally suggest to them to start with? The first thing I tell them to do is find a good coach. Like, okay. Let's not, say they have the right coach. Okay. So you're expecting the coach to tell them. Right. Well, no, not necessarily. What what we like to do mm -hmm. uh, at Launch Control yeah. is we like to work really closely with the coaches mm -hmm. because there are, there are really great sales conversion strategies coming from the coaches. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, how can we fuse that with SMS mm -hmm. to create a really distinct process for those students, right? So, okay. so but let's say they don't have a coach. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get a straight answer. <laughs> if there's brand new, they're like, bro, who do I text? I want to get a deal. Yeah. Who do, that, who, who, who do you suggest? Okay. Um, in, in that case, I would tell them to not do what everyone else is going to do. Okay. Right? So don't go to pre-foreclosure and lien lists in the big markets. Okay. Okay. So question of how far you're willing to drive. But if you're, instead of Vegas, try Henderson. Mm. Right. Okay. So like a secondary market. Right. Try, try a secondary market and, and stay out of like the easy win pre-foreclosure kind of lists mm -hmm. and start looking for other stories that you can tell. Right. So try something that is, I don't know, out of state owners, right? Okay. Right. If it's out of state owners, there's an, there's a, there's a fair chance that they probably own multiple properties yeah. or at least they're willing to have that, have, a, have a conversation. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're more likely to understand off market deals. They're more likely to be receptive to a call. Yeah. Right. So I would try those. I would try slow playing high equity 
mm-hmm. in, in those same areas and just not trying to close it in 30 days, but trying to set the table yeah. for being able to to uh, have a conversation down the line. And and if I can get them to respond in that initial te- text message, yeah, creating a solutions-based conversation. Mm. So it's not, because this is a huge mistake that people make is, yeah. We have these these amazing drip automations that allow you to have these these kind of solutions based conversations where you're mm-hmm. taking different angles and different approaches. Yeah, and people send one you know every thirty days that mm-hmm. says, "Hey, how about cash for your house? Want a cash <laughs> offer? How about cash now? <laughs> yeah, still got that cash." And I'm like, "That didn't work the first six times. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's now. like the date thing, right? It's yeah. exactly. It's like, like the do you want to go on a date right now? You yeah. want to go? How about right now? I want to know. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Hey. hey which <laughs> nobody loves. Yeah. Nobody right? would go. So, for that. so you know, if it's if you think about it from a home homeowner's perspective. Yeah. And you you you've got this house. You've got limited options. Yeah. And somebody's coming in, and they're actually telling you about options that you have, and they're not hard selling you. Yeah. But instead, they're educating you. Uh-huh. And and you go, you know, three four text messages in, you go, you know what, I do want to have that call. Mm-hmm. that gets it done yeah like just hey 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 yeah does not mm-hmm. so to answer your question i would look for opportunities to find people that are are getting a lot less pressure mm-hmm. from other investors in um just outside markets yeah that are not getting hit up as hard so i have the ability to stand out that makes sense and and i would i would generate opt-in data like if i if i were to start a wholesaling yeah. business uh-huh. right now that I wouldn't even I wouldn't even touch uh, any kind of outbound until I had my inbound processes set up. Mm. Honestly, like I'd set up, I'd set up a, a, like some kind of social media. I'd set up, mm-hmm. I'd get my my foundational stuff done. Yeah, and then my next step would be SMS engagement because mm. I would I would have the ability to push people towards you know, some level of professionalism, right? Like if you're just doing driving for dollars and you've got nothing backing that up, yeah, nothing that's solutions based, nothing that shows that, that you're, um, you know, a realistic option for people, uh-huh. you know, cause unless, unless you like, you know, call them and they agree to meet you on site and they have a good human interaction with you, mm-hmm. they're not going to be able to research you. Yeah. Right? So I want to be able to be, if, if it is an inbound lead in particular, mm-hmm. researchable, Right. Got it. And if I have a really good conversation with somebody from outbound, I'm not going to offer it up on the first text, obviously. Mm-hmm. But if I have a really good conversation with somebody, I want to be able to prove myself. Yeah. So I, I'm going to put the mechanisms in place to prove myself first. Right. And then I would go out and I would be, like I said, looking for opportunity, looking for gaps in the market and mm-hmm. looking for gaps in marketing instead of looking at volume. I'd be looking at strategy. Got it. Is outbound text messaging legal (laughs) yes yes it is (laughs) is it really because i thought it was a a violation of the tcpa act no so there's a lot of confusion between two bodies the tcpa and the ctia ctia Uh, i've never heard of that yeah so um the basic breakdown goes like this tcpa is federal regulations there are there are state versions of this as well but it's regulation of the telecom industry. TCPA is very macro, it's very big, and it applies almost exclusively to um, robo-dialing or, or just like auto calls, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it doesn't really apply to text messaging. The only, the only thing, caveats for text messaging, is that if it's outbound, is that it, it can't be through an auto-dialer, which launch control is not. Mm. And you cannot sell a product or a service. Mm. So you can't be like 30% discount, blah, 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 right? Yeah. That you have to have opt-in to do. If you have opt-in, you can text message anything. That You can sell a product or service. You can give discounts. You can do but whatever. But wholesaling a service or is being no, a realtor so, a service? Um, well, that's an important distinction. Okay. Mm-hmm. So wholesaling, because you are not taking a commission for what you're doing, you're not actually providing a service you're just a middleman in a mm-hmm. in, in transaction the homeowner doesn't necessarily know that but if you're not paying the homeowner isn't paying a fee to a wholesaler mm. it's there it's just a transaction between two individuals so it's not a product or a service that's being sold 
And and this is, you know, this has been tested and proven. It's it's not something it's the thing that people worry about. Yeah. And it's not what they should be worried about. Oh, okay. Because there we send millions and millions of messages a month that that isn't where people have issues. Where people have issues is with the CTIA. CTIA is the um, best practices mm-hmm. put down by the carriers as as telecom industry best practices specific to text messaging. So all of the things that people have been asked to do recently in terms of like provide your EIN number, mm-hmm. provide proof of your website. website with opt-in, all of that, all of that mm-hmm. is CTIA. It has nothing to do with the with federal guidelines. It is a business to business relationship that you are establishing with the carriers. So in order to establish that business to business relationship there, they want to vet your company and say basically that everyone agrees to, to the best of their ability to follow best practices or to follow as closely as they can, these guidelines that have been set down by the carriers. Mm -hmm. So in that business to business relationship, they have the ability to manage that relationship. So when you're sending text messages, doesn't matter if it's through launch or any other platform, the way that they view it through the, the carriers and the campaign registry, which is the body they use to get all of these B2B relationships set up, mm-hmm. is it's a single channel between your company and the carriers. Mm-hmm. And and any of that traffic goes through, it, it they have the ability to filter it based off of their best practices or mm-hmm. to, in the worst case scenario, shut down your ability to text mm. because it didn't meet their guidelines. Mm. Nothing legal about it. There are no fines associated with it. The worst case scenario is that you're going to be told you can't text anymore because you you broke those guidelines or were too far outside of those guidelines mm-hmm. for them to allow your campaign to continue. Yeah. So everybody's concern is in the wrong place, right? Like it, the the legality side of things is is not where where you're going you're going to have any problems. The business best practices, the B two B relationship. If you do not take a recipient first approach, you could get yourself into trouble. And by trouble, I mean you could have your ability to use that outbound uh, system taken away because of not following closely enough with the best practices. Does that make sense? Yeah, and you could get sued too, right? The 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 only time anybody ever gets sued on like there was a there was a case that came out of Texas recently and it made some of the the group discussion boards. And uh, if you if you read through it, the uh, law held and by the way, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, this is can, not legal advice. This is so not far. legal advice. I <laughs> We're going to put a warning underneath this. I can this. connect yeah. you with, yeah. with the compliance professionals. But um, the, the the use case held, right? It wasn't selling a product or service, wasn't a problem. But if you really read through the documents, mm-hmm. what got this particular company in trouble yeah. is that the person involved had asked to opt out like a dozen times. Oh, they requested it, to opt out. Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't respected, mm. and and they just kept hitting them up again and again because uh-huh. they weren't looking at it as a recipient; they were looking at it as data. Yeah, and and by not honoring that opt out, not only does that break CTIA best practices, mm-hmm. it becomes abusive behavior, and abusive behavior is the kind of thing that gets people in trouble. Yeah, nobody, no single homeowner is going to go through the hoops of trying to go through a lawsuit for a single text that honored an opt out. Yeah. Nobody. Mm-hmm. It's only when people get abusive and they and they find loopholes. Like launch control has a million checks and balances to keep people from being abusive. Mm-hmm. But if if you find a loophole or you're using multiple platforms and you're sending the same people messages and you're not honoring opt out, mm-hmm. that's a problem. You have to look at it as a recipient. So it it never gets to that point of legality unless abuse was involved in some way, shape, or form. Mm. Hey guys, so we're about to talk about the TCPA Act and other laws that apply to text messaging, cold calling, or ringless voicemail. I am not an attorney, and our guest, Michael, is not an attorney, so we advise you to go seek legal help. This is just our opinions. 
So I was actually sued for the TCPA Act, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of other real estate people that were sued for the TCPA Act because what happened is there's like lawyers that kind of just look for it, yeah. and then whenever they get a text message, they engage, and then they get your information, and then they file a lawsuit. So that happened to me. I ended up having to pay like 15000 um, I've had friends who paid like 30,000, depending on like how many text messages or cold calls or ringless voicemails they've made. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say someone's listening to this and they do get sued by uh, a homeowner or a lawyer, which like, I guess we can't really give legal advice, but uh, what have you seen happen in the past? We, we have... I don't, I don't know of any case of anyone using launch control where, where it's come to that. Oh, that's good. But uh, what I would suggest, there are, there are, in terms of legal advice, mm -hmm. there are people that focus exclusively on compliance mm -hmm. and compliance law. Mm. And uh, we can put people, if they are using launch control, we can put them in direct contact with uh, those professionals. But you have to seek professional advice in yeah. that sense. Like, don't don't take action on something that is legal mm -hmm. without legal representation. That's yeah. just simple advice for any business. Yeah. So when I got sued, what happened was, um, I don't even know if I should talk about this, but uh, we contacted a homeowner and he was like, yeah, yeah, I want to sell. Like he, he told us, oh, I want to sell for 200 and the house, we thought the house was worth 500. So we're like, oh, okay, this is like a good deal. So we started talking to the guy, and then he was like, yeah, yeah, like what? What was your what was your guys' company name? Oh, okay, yeah. What's your address? And then I remember I had an acquisition person, and I heard him ask him that, and I was like, oh, that's a weird question. And I started paying more attention to their conversation. And then, long story short, he sued us, and then it was like I think it was like for fifteen grand or something like that. And then I was like, all right. But we got to hire a lawyer. So we hired like a, a lawyer that actually worked with Brett Daniels. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know who Brett Daniels yeah, is. Yeah. So he worked with Brett Daniels and um, the lawyer and the homeowner butted heads. And then the guy got even more upset and was like, uh, I, we're, we're taking this all the way, all this stuff. And I ended up calling the homeowner and apologizing and then we negotiated like a settlement um, because what ended up happening was paying the lawyer just added to the cost and they were charging us like per call and like per hour to review the contracts and like all this stuff. And um, we ended up settling, but yeah, that was my experience of getting sued. Can I ask you a, yeah. can I ask you a, a question? Yeah. Um, in that process, do you feel like there should have been an earlier exit point like what do you for, mean for your team like like just opted out that person or put them on do and call do not call was it was it a a comfortable cadence or was it pushed a little bit <laughs> was what pushed like the marketing it was just how many times the, the homeowner was contacted. no so the guy was contacted once and he like he acted like he was interested. He never asked us to remove him or he never opted out or anything. He just acted like he was interested and then got our information and actually like filed the lawsuit with the state and sent it to us. And then I ended up doing research on him. I literally just Googled his name and it was like, I'll just say his name was Bob. It was like Bob versus Sunrun. Bob versus this bank, Bob mm -hmm. versus the, like, so he was like a professional yeah. litigator or something like that. And um, yeah, I, I, in hindsight, I don't even know if he would have won the case, but at the time I was so afraid and so busy that I was like, I don't want to sit here and deal with this. So let me like hire the lawyer. Right. I, again, yeah. not a legal professional. Yeah. 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 The one, um, we do scrub against that. Yeah. Anybody that's a known litigator. Mm -hmm. Two, extremely rare. Yeah. That, that very on, rare. On a one text situation, mm -hmm. you would be in that. Yeah. Three, he would have lost. 
He like, probably would have the, lost in hindsight. Yeah, the whole the whole system that those guys are going through. If you do, you know, get extremely unlucky and land one of those, they're playing the settlement game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. Yeah, you know? and and he got settled, and I respect the hustle. I was like, oh, this guy's like I, I was like I respect it, but I was just like at the time, what happens is you. For me, I had no idea how the laws worked or anything like that. And then I started hearing horror stories like, oh, yeah. this guy got sued in Florida and lost this. This guy, you know, did this and all this crap. So I was like, oh, shit, I got to like hurry up and like nip this in the butt. So we hired the lawyer and then the lawyer kind of got the guy upset and then he started making more threats. So I was just like, all right, let's just pay this guy and like make it go away. Like If you take it back a step, mm -hmm. because I know that when this happens, people really think about this as being a real estate investment thing, mm -hmm. but it's not. Yeah. 20 plus billion text messages are sent every day internationally. Mm. Some of those are, a lot of those are one-to-one -one personal communication. A lot of them are opted in marketing. Mm -hmm. Some of them are more prospecting marketing. Yeah. It's, it's a whole mix. And so it, any time in any industry that the recipient is upset, mm -hmm. there's there's a there's a a a, a slight risk, mm -hmm. I, I suppose. But um, if you are in real estate investment and you 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 know take the step to uh, have that list scrubbed, and you are very respectful of the recipient and mm -hmm. you honor opt out requests and you don't push things, mm -hmm. the, the chances of that happening are are extremely low right mm -hmm. because like i said like if it gets pushed all the way mm -hmm. that it's it the legal precedent is going to hold but mm -hmm. but that's very unlikely to happen mm -hmm. right if you if you aim for really respectful recipient first um sms engagement you honor opt-outs when that when they're asked and you put processes in place like we like we discussed earlier in the call mm -hmm. to start really having true opt-in coming into your system mm -hmm. so you're not doing 100 percent outbound but but rather 60 40 mm -hmm. and and trending towards a higher and higher amount of trackable opt-in mm -hmm. you're going to get safer and safer and safer so yeah if the more you use outbound to kind of push opt-in and the more you use these these basic marketing principles to build up more of that that them coming to you motivated opt-in kind of opportunities it there's there's zero risk in that yeah none, none whatsoever yeah right so the more the more that you can trend towards that and the more that you can you can put you know good recipient focused outbound and and then and then try to put the processes in place to get more and more inbound coming in yeah then you know you're going to end up having an sms engagement system that has really amazing ROI and then as as you grow get safer and safer because you're you're putting more and more of your focus into getting leads to come to you. Yeah. All right, so um if people want to learn more about launch control or want to reach out to you, where's the best place to go? Yeah, I mean just come come to their website, go to launchcontrol.us. Uh, we'll connect you with our team. Our sales team is great. They'll find out exactly where you are in your sales and your your growth process mm -hmm. get you lined up in the, in the right position with us and then we've got the best success team in the business and they'll walk you through sms engagement strategies data best practices all of that mm -hmm. and and if anybody's working with um with a really great coach out there let mm -hmm. us know mm -hmm. and we'll try to take some of the processes that you're learning with your coach mm -hmm. and give you an sms engagement angle on that mm -hmm. so you're able to really em employ your growth strategies right from the beginning with mm -hmm. us beautiful and then what we'll probably do is we'll put a link in the description where um if you want to reach out to launch control i'm sure we'll work out a, a good deal or something like that where we could do some uh deals together okay all right, beautiful. Perfect. All right, guys, this was the Wealthy Investor Podcast. We are out. Peace.